Do you remember what you were doing on the night of April 16th, 1902? I'm not accusing you of anything, but at 2 a.m., somebody set fire to the jail in Eveleth, Minnesota. Then, same night, just hours later, somebody else blew up the depot. The depot would have been in this general area. I mean, they just obliterated it. What kind of town is this Eveleth, anyway? Welcome to Minnesota Historia. I'm Haley, your guide to Minnesota's boomtown. Like, literally, I guess. Welcome to Eveleth home of the United States Hockey Hall of Fame, the world's largest hockey stick, the Eveleth Clown Band, a Carnegie Library, a Hippodrome, and one of Minnesota's last remaining video rental stores. I sure hope that's still open by the time we're done recording this episode, but I am seriously worried about their business model. Now let's dig into this quirky little town. Eveleth is located in Minnesota's Iron Range. See, it's right here on the edge of this little orange stuff. That orange stuff is the Masabi Range, one of several large deposits of iron ore in northern Minnesota. There's also a Vermilion Range, a Gunflint Range, and a Cuyuna Range, which was named after Kyler Adams and his dog, Una. That is a true story. See, here's Una. In Minnesota, we just call this whole general area the Iron Range. Iron was first discovered here in 1884 by prospectors looking for gold. After that, towns just started popping up out of the ground like little groundhogs. At first it was Tower and then Sedan. Then they finally found iron a little further south and we got Virginia and Hibbing. Eveleth started in 1892 as a bunch of log cabins in a mining camp. In 1893, they built streets and buildings and held some elections. And then they discovered iron literally everywhere underneath Eveleth. So they decided to move the entire town, buildings and all. But don't worry, they moved entire towns all the time back then. Nobody thought it was weird. I think it's weird. This is Tucker Nelson an Iron Ranch historian who doesn't think it's weird that they moved the whole town. It's not unusual, uh, to quote Tom Jones. So behind me is where Eveleth was born. What's now a hole in the ground was the original town site. Starting in 1899, the buildings were moved up the hill to where Eveleth is now. It's behind the camera, in other words, is where Eveleth ended up. So, how do you move a whole town? It happened more slowly than that with sleighs and logs and horses. They used a steam hoist on what's now Adams Avenue to haul the buildings up the hill. The largest building, which held the bank, newspaper, and drugstore, was moved in two pieces. Eveleth's Dr. Charles W. Moore complained about it later. Before the town was moved, we had acquired sidewalks and electric lights. <sighs> it was some time before we were so well equipped again. He also said everyone took the situation good-naturedly but I have moved cats into new apartments, so I seriously doubt that. By the way, they also moved Hibbing in 1919, which was a much bigger town. Check out these photos. It really looks like they nailed it. This is the kind of thing that happens when you live in a boom town, and I don't mean in a town that blows up a lot. I mean a town undergoing rapid growth due to sudden prosperity. Although, Eveleth does blow up a lot too. I haven't even told you about the Spruce Mine explosion on October 8th, 1900. The powder house for the Spruce Mine exploded. The building blew up. Mines need enormous stockpiles of explosive materials to move all that earth around. Newspaper accounts at the time differ a little bit as to how it may have started. The most popular theory is that a stray bullet hit the mine's powder house. The October 8, 1900 Minneapolis Tribune said, The town of Eveleth presents a sorrowful sight. It looks as though a regiment of soldiers had passed through and looted the town. Almost every person has either their hands or heads bandaged, and the windows are barricaded with any sort of lumber attainable. I would hope that they stored their explosives a little bit differently after that event. The Spruce Mine is also notable for having the only movie theater in the world located 200 feet underground. In 1925, the owners of the mine turned an unused pump room into the Wilsonian Auditorium. I like to imagine miners watching the sci-fi epic Metropolis while snacking on their pizza and pasties. Metropolis is a movie about a futuristic utopian society that mistreats the working class by shoving them underground, so you can understand why I dream of showing it to miners in the 1920s. There's also a sexy robot but uh, they mostly just watched safety films down there. But occasionally the men might enjoy a, a comedy which would have still been silent at the time as the mine grew. This underground theater was almost certainly out of use if not destroyed by the 1940s. Now, let's burn this mother down. 
I'll, I'll show you where the jail would have been. Within hours of each other, the city jail caught on fire and the Duluth Mesabi and Northern Depot, which is only a, a few blocks behind me, or was at the time, exploded. Here's how the Virginia Enterprise reported it. The new city of Eveleth comes to the fore this week as a news furnisher. The fire was started under mysterious circumstances. This is Eveleth City Hall. This is where the city jail would have been in 1902 when M.J. Balm died in the fire that may or may not have been set by him. His charred remains were picked from the debris later. His features were burned to a crisp and you know, this isn't as much fun as I thought it was going to be. Well, um, I, I, I could say a little bit about the man who died. M.J. Balm was reported to be a Finlander, even though Balm is not a very Finnish name. I don't know what he was arrested for. Newspaper accounts indicate that he was working at the fail mine, but had a wife and children living in Duluth. I promise the next crime is more fun. A few blocks south, if you look down the street, there's a, a small grayish building, which is roughly where the Duluth Mesabi and Northern Depot was located before it blew up. And after it blew up, it was rebuilt uh, roughly on the same site. Because this, I'm sure this is just a garage. The destruction of the Mesabi Depot was doubtless the work of burglars. Part of the safe was found later with two holes drilled into it. It is said there was considerable money in the safe at the time. They used far too much nitroglycerin. The rest of the depot was obliterated. A considerable amount of coin and paper was picked up on property adjoining the wreck the following day. Now that's a fun crime. No deaths, no injuries, and free money flowing all over. You, you can see in, in the one known photo of the aftermath that there are people standing on the remnants of the depot. There's a young girl with her father standing on the wreckage. And I don't know if they were just curious onlookers or if they were hoping to find some coins or some gold from the safe. We don't know. Like any boomtown, Eveleth has seen more than its fair share of economic busts. Yeah, downtown Eveleth reminds me of uh, a seasoned hockey player that once had all of his teeth, um, but over time has, has had many of them knocked out. But people can't help loving this quirky little town. People are very proud to be from Eveleth. In, in a way that I, I think is, is different from, from other towns. Eveleth has probably the largest 4th of July celebration around, and people come back. Some, something draws them back. People, people have a connection to this place. Thanks for watching Minnesota Historia, your guide to all things quirky in Minnesota history. Check out some of our other episodes where we go even further and deeper into the quirky, soft underbelly of this very weird state. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please become a member of PBS North to support projects just like this.